to early stage fintech startups. And we try to help those companies create better products and services that can improve consumers. And so what I do is I, consumers financial health. What I do is I run something called the Financial Solutions Lab, which is a $30 million five year partnership between CFSI and JP Morgan Chase. Every year, we put a challenge out to the market. And we look for companies who are solving problems for consumers to apply the program. Um, we'll select about eight to 10 companies each year. We'll invest a quarter million dollars into those companies, um, usually in, on pretty permissive terms. And then we'll work really closely with them for about nine years to help them grow and scale. And so that will connect them to partners. So that network of financial institutions will connect them to regulators and policymakers in Washington, to investors, uh, to really any resource they might need to take their business to the next level. Mm -hmm. We've, we're, this is our third year we're looking for this, and we're looking for products this year just broadly that are improving consumer financial health. So that could include small business, it could include more infrastructure plays. Um, the reason we kind of put this challenge out kind of broad terms is to kind of see what's out in the market and, and where we can be helpful. Um, that, our application process is open for another week and a half, closes next Thursday night. Um, so if you're doing anything in the space, or if you know anybody that is, like reach out to me, I'll, I'll be here for it. Um, Apply, encourage you to apply. Um, as far as, like, this is the third year, so we've had two sets of classes that come through the program. So we've deployed about four and a half million dollars into those companies. They've subsequently raised about 130 million dollars. Um, when they come in on that, like across that portfolio, they were serving about 130,000 users. Now they're serving about 1.4 million. Um, our furthest along company is probably Digit, which um, is an automated savings app, and kind of called Even, which helps consumers smooth cash flows. We also have a loan servicer that was in our program this year, um, which is really like getting into the nuts and bolts of servicing. Um, we've got a robo-advisor. Uh, we've got a product that helps people you know, build their credit. Um, really kind of across the gamut. So uh, anything that's in this space, we want to see. Um, encourage you to apply. Even if you're too early, like I was actually just talking to a founder, like you should also apply anyway, because we use this kind of the benchmark what's in the market. And we'll talk to other investors throughout the year, other accelerators. But that's that's kind of like our, our, our lower threshold. That being said, we do partner with like a lot of other accelerators, and so companies that were really interesting to us. Um, there's a lot of investors who will fund pre-product companies. There's a lot of accelerators who do that. There's a whole market of people who will do that stuff. So we're like we see interesting stuff. We'll like happily help help push you along. And what do you see in the market for? There's what what is there a big gap in the market? Is there a certain gap that you guys think that needs to be filled? Yeah, I mean, I, I would say that like a third of the country is not served effectively by the financial services industry. Mm -hmm. And is there like a specific area of financial services? Um, like, so we, we kind of think about it a little bit different. Like we have kind of this kind of thesis of financial health, right? Um, and that is like your financial health and your daily systems help you to pursue opportunity and have resilience and get shocks. And so we did, a couple of years ago, we did about a 7,000 person national representative study and tried to like, actually benchmark, like who is unhealthy? And about 56% of the population kind of fell on this point of being financially unhealthy. So that, that's kind of how we would think about it, and I'm happy to kind of share that research. But, um, and so it's a little bit broader mandate than like unbanked or low and moderate income Americans. Like we'll work with products that are, I won't say ask for wood, but we'll, we'll serve everybody. If we think that there will be a, an impact on those consumers that we, we care about. How does your uh, program work? I mean, where are you based? Is it remote? Is people have to be in a certain area? Yeah. Like I see or? No, that's a good question. So we're, the, my team is based in San Francisco uh, for the most part. Um, CFSI is based in Chicago. We have offices in New York and Washington. The program is a remote, remote program. Like we, act, we do not want companies to move to us. Um, we'd like you to stay where We have a company here in LA, Albert, which is like two blocks away. Um, what we really focus on is, is it's, it's pretty customized. So there's about six meetings during the course of the program. Um, the first one is to like kind of introduce companies to the challenges we, that we're looking at. The second is to get them to know each other. So we like literally we go to like Jackson, Wyoming, and just kind of hang out for two days. Um, the third, and then after that, it's really about kind of increasing the exposure of the company. So the third meeting is to the CFSI network, those network of providers. Um, our fourth one is to go to Washington. So like last year, we went to the White House. In the morning, we met with all the various prudential regulators and law enforcement bodies over lunch, and then had like an afternoon session with a lot of civil rights groups and nonprofits that tend to have the ear of the regulatory agencies when they're setting rules. And then the last meeting was, in, was we did a meeting with the JPM Chase executives, 
and then meeting with investors, so all the major investors in FinTech. But apart from that, we're working to tell with companies what they're doing, what, what, what their what the issues there are. So we've had companies where we were like, they had one customer and like one guy, we were like helping them hire a second employee, all the way up to like you know, Ethan and Digit kind of helping him think through like his strategy for policymakers in DC. So it can really run the gamut. We kind of select for that too, just to manage our resources. So I was kind of curious, you mentioned investors uh, a little bit here and there. I was kind of curious, what, what, what kind of arrangement are you typically looking at when it comes to like approaching investors? Are you talking to like, you know, debt financing, equity financing, is equity financing, is it like a significant portion or like controlling interest or, you know, like what's, what's, what's normal, if, if there is a normal? Yeah, uh, so we say we, we basically use an investment note because it's efficient. Like we could give grants to companies, yeah. but we actually wouldn't, we wouldn't get really high quality companies for that. Um, so our investment is a convertible note. It'll almost always be your lowest possible cost of capital in the cap table. Um, and that's about it, $250,000. As far as other investors, like I think we have a really good sense of the landscape of tech <coughs> investors. Um, we're probably not as plugged into some of the bigger like marketplace lenders where, because like, you know, generally, we're focused on consumers, and you don't see as much of that activity anymore there. Um, but apart from that, we'll, we'll try to find investors for companies, and you know, that's not the main thing we do. Like YC or 500, these programs are really good at connecting you to like equity investors at the right stage. Um, we're a little bit more kind of ad hoc on that, and so I, I don't know if that's the strongest element of our program, if we're really honest, but like, we'll tend to work with our founders to kind of introduce them to other people and to try to help them through that process. What's your protocol for your new business? How do you, how long does it take you to see what they really are capable of doing in your organization? I don't know yet. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, we, we're, we're basically betting on the product. I think that that's the big difference between us and like, in the, like an, an investor in the pure sense is, you know, we have a company that helps people manage food stamps. And when they came in, it was like one guy, and he had one thousand dollars. He had one of the pitch contests in his bank account, um, but there was nobody else working on like innovating in food stamps. And so we were willing to take a lot of risk on that because like who else is doing it? Um, and since then, he's you know he's serving several hundred thousand users at this point. And he's about to raise a pretty massive kind of Series A from a well-known Sandhill fund. So yeah, I. I think it works out a little bit because we're, we have kind of a view of like what a good product is, and we're trying to select for that. But I mean, certainly there are other we have other companies. We haven't had any companies fail yet, but there's certainly companies that aren't growing with that same trajectory. And uh, yeah, I don't, I don't know. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Any other questions? <laughs> awesome. Well, if you guys are interested, we'll be around. We'll apply for your program. Thanks, cool. Thanks a lot. <laughs> So, uh, got Mula. Thanks, Brian. Thank you. So, uh, yeah, hi, everybody. I'm Gaurav Pat, founder of Startup Mula. Uh, so, our process of, um, let, let me go back a couple of steps actually. So, the pain point started when you know some of the companies that I personally invested in, Angel founded, co-founded, and started looking at larger investors to actually come on board, you know, at the Series A, B, C stage. And I started realizing that the whole process of raising funds is kind of disjointed, and it actually keeps companies always worrying about, hey, when is the next time I'm going to have to raise money in order to survive, you know, the next six months or twelve months, right? So all of that started, you know giving us ideas on you know, how you can actually make this process a lot more efficient. Right? So with what CFSI is doing and you know, connecting companies or looking at different product ideas in the marketplace and approaching and creating a structured program around that, uh, we are going to the next stage and we are actually giving quality pieces of information back to our investors on their mobile devices you know, based on different parameters. But these investors are pre-selected on the kinds of companies that they've already invested in in the past as well as companies they like to invest in the future. So some of the companies that we have relationships with, emerging companies, 
are actually you know way ahead in terms of technology right? they're maybe five to ten years ahead but then we know that those companies are going to be the ones that are going to survive another you know 20 50 years so what we've built on our platform is an efficient way for investors as well as emerging companies to communicate with each other and transact with each other using the underlying technology of blockchain and the blockchain methodology is coming from a digital exchange of equity and a transaction that actually is transparent through the network so that at every point of the communication between companies and investors, we sort of keep everybody in the loop on you know, what's going on, what are the next steps. And we want to make this process efficient so that investors are able to invest in these companies in, in a matter of 90 minutes versus like 90 days or 180 days that it currently takes in order to raise that kind of funding. So that's in a nutshell, you know, what the company does. So we have in our network a lot of emerging companies, you know, global companies that have that kind of technology, and we are now looking at investors to join our network and become part of, you know, this whole fintech revolution, and making this process a lot more transparent and efficient for all parties concerned. So that's in a nutshell. What was that three-minute pitch? <laughs> <laughs> Any questions? We've got, we've got a few now. <laughs> what is, uh, so obviously you guys are kind of a two-sided marketplace basically, right? So what does is, what is Moolah take on that? So if you guys link yourself with an investor, what, how does that work out? So we are a proposal of, you know, we do 5% uh, exchange of equity as well as 5% of the amount that's raised for the yeah. company. And we basically build a team for the company, right? So we not only do the fundraising, we also help from the business development sales perspective as well. Okay. Connecting direct end clients that are actually in that particular industry. So we're providing customers as well okay. to the company. And then we, you know, the methodology is of course hiring a person like a, you know, inherent COO or CEO mm -hmm. that can actually take the reins from us and then run with it, mm -hmm. you know, six to eight months down the line. So it's not just money. No, yeah. So we've got whole training yeah. and connecting people in the industry with advisors that have been doing this for a while. Okay. Um, how are you doing KYC and AML uh, validation? So KYC is, again, uh, if you talk about from a banking, financial you know, regulations perspective, there is uh, accredited investors that we only take on our platform, right? Sure. So all these are you know, third-party companies where you can get the verification done, sure. basically, anyhow. And then you know, AML matters when you're dealing with those transactions that are cross-border transactions, Correct. Right? but we're not working with cross-border transactions. Uh, so uh, you're paying like a quarter million compliance then? I'm sorry? Are you paying like a quarter million in compliance for your blockchain? So, Wait. sorry, repeat the question. For your blockchain? Yeah, you're, you have to pay a quarter million at least in compliance in order to. Oh, deal like with licenses, fees, and all that. Like right, yeah, yeah. So, the licensing fees you're talking sure. about, right? Yeah, so that transactions that will happen through the platform, yeah, we bring the license to that point. Oh, we're so, not so the platform is not on the platform? No, so we're not transacting on the platform. Oh. It's a web app right now. Oh, okay. So, yeah, the transaction processing happens. So, where, where does the blockchain come into play, if you don't mind me asking? So blockchain is where the transparency lies, right? So when you're exchanging digital equity in exchange for a financial transaction that takes place with the platform, that's where blockchain and the identity and the ownership and the security, you know, is where the blockchain comes. Can I sneak in the last question? Uh, what consensus algorithm are you using? Which this may be a little bit too detailed for this group actually. Just so not for me. Tell yeah. me. <laughs> I want to I know. There's a private blockchain that we've been Which working one, on, right? Ethereum? So well, again, you know, that's that information. It's a this little bit like We would talk to yeah, investors yeah. and give them the <laughs> idea. Yeah, 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 yeah. Of, you know, I would expect someone to know about blockchain. So like, yeah, yeah, not necessarily going into that deeper conversation. Uh, tra right. Trade secrets. Yeah. <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> open source white papers don't discuss it at Any other questions? Yes. Are there any particular types of co companies you want to work with? Types of industries, and are any in particular that you absolutely won't work with? Uh, let me ask the second part of the question. And any companies that do uh, <coughs> transactions that's on a global space, yeah, we won't work with them just because the regulations and all of that prohibit uh, anything from a global perspective. Uh, so yeah, that we are not focusing on right now. We are focusing on local companies, industry verticals. You know, we. So I've had experience from you know shipping customs, so supply chain, to healthcare, to music industry, and I see applications of this. You know, from all kinds of you know verticals, industry verticals, right? So the focus has been cybersecurity now, um, you know, healthcare space, sharing information, sharing data, and being able to work across supply chain and you know transference of goods from one place to the other. Okay, thank you. 
do you, may I? Um, is there, a, you guys screen your companies that you work with? I mean, you obviously don't want to go out and say, try to connect companies to investors that you don't believe in. Yeah, so yeah. there's a long yeah. process filtering process of getting companies on board, right? And we do interview the founders, you look at the background, and, you know, we see all kinds of information about the company. We do our own pre-due diligence is there, before we bring the company Is there a stage board. that you start at? Some of the companies we've been approached with are raising five million, some are raising 25, some are raising $50,000, right? So, but then the idea is to be able to connect them with accredited investors that actually do investments in that space, right? So we are matching, created this matching algorithm AI piece that matches the two based on certain parameters and criteria. Thank you. Any other questions there, anyone? One's just through an ICO. I, I don't believe in ICO. Okay. All right, well, thanks a lot, everyone, for uh, joining us and uh, continue networking and doing deals. <laughs> right, thank you. Thank you. And get ready for the pitch. I'm going to come by right now. Hey, okay. Good to see you. Good to see you.